Hey, Shubi Doodlers, as part of my Doctor Who 50th anniversary series of drawings, this is a Sontaran. Who are they? I don't know, but let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's draw it. Well, I have to admit, I don't really know that much about the Sontarans, but they are kind of um, humanoid, really, aren't they? They, uh, I don't know, <laughs> most aliens in the end have a head and two arms and two legs, um, and they're quite kind of pointy headed like that and then so then if you draw a line across like that they're a bit humpty dumpty actually aren't they when you think about it flick back there come down like that and then that will give you that kind of great big broad color that the Sontaran have round about here and I'm going to draw these heavy not eyebrows, they're kind of, uh, what would you call them? Um, furrows, furrows in the forehead. Obviously, having to make far too many moral decisions about which planets to destroy and things like that. Um, draw a line down the middle and then these two little curves either side. And then from that there, now bring that sort of down and curl it around there, down and curl it around. And then the eyes will then come in like that. And put the eyeballs in the middle with the pupils there. And I do the pupils usually like a letter C or a Pac-Man. The old Pac-Man. You remember Pac-Man? Is he still going, Pac-Man? <laughs> I used to love Pac-Man. And then we want a kind of a little a hint of a bobble on the end of the nose and and it's amazing how aliens always have noses to smell as well and I'm, I'm sure they would have different kind of ways of doing things really bring a line up there like that coming around there and then let's do another one as well coming up around there and we're going to want a kind of cheek line coming down there which is kind of an S shape and we want kind of the opposite shape on that side and we've got these big kind of furrowing shapes like that from the nose coming down there and then we need the mouth um, big kind of lips they have And I wonder whether the designer of these, uh, the person who designed the Sontar, and I wonder whether they had Humpty Dumpty in mind at the time. <laughs> It'd be interesting to know. A <laughs> uh, little blip there. And you're going to see a tongue in the middle. And then we want some ears. It's going to stick on the side like that. And you're going to want a kind of a curly, whirly shape inside it kind of like that um a few little hairy bits sticking out i'm gonna just put a bit of shading in around the back there and then to make him stand out i'm gonna just do this very very simple shading in the background which is just sort of radiating out really from a point in his mouth um just radiating outwards and the main reason for this is to keep a kind of bit of dramatic edge to it but then also to make his face stand out you know while I'm doing this I realize how quite accurate I am at coming up and not actually going over the edge and and I think that that's years and years and years of practice and just the more you the more you draw the more you kind of get in control of your hand and what it's doing and how far it moves the pen around <coughs> It's kind of muscle memory, I suppose. Now I'm going to do this kind of shading around this way, following the line of this kind of collar, the spacesuit collar, really, isn't it? And then we're going to get these kind of big shoulder caps that are coming in there. I'm going to have this some kind of symbol thing on there, and this is coming down and across and down and down 
kind of indentations here as well. We've got some kind of Sontaran logo like that there, which is sort of standing out. The 3D fashion. I'm just going to add a bit more shade to this. So I'm cross hatching now. And I'm going to get a bit more sort of modelling down this way by shading in the edges there. And then this will be very dark underneath there, as will it be there. And then we have a kind of a ridge, which I'm going to do. I'm not going to draw a line because it's a much softer thing than a, than a, a line across. It's kind of ridge. So I'm going to allow this kind of dottiness of that when I put the pen down, it makes a little dot. So I'm allowing that to provide that kind of ridge. And again, on this side. And by flicking it, I get a blob of dark ink where I start. And then flicking it, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner, the line. And so you get this kind of graduated shadow shade effect. I'm going to leave a little area of light and then start in the other direction. And then I'm going to start from underneath, from below. And then I'm going to put a bit of cross hatching in here as well, just to make this lower section a bit darker. And here again, bring that up. And I feel this all needs to get much darker around here. I think with cross hatching, you just keep working at it and working at it and adding uh, until you've done too much and you think that's horrible and you start again. <laughs> Try and get it right next time. Um, or you just take a lot of time and you really think about what you're doing. Um, I think some, some cross hatchers are very, very careful and they take their time and uh, very slow and thoughtful and think about every mark they make whereas I'm more of a I'll just slap it on and see what happens really kind of thing <laughs> so I suppose in a kind of way I'm kind of painting with cross hatching rather than designing and planning and, uh, but either way is fine it doesn't matter it just depends on your kind of personality and the way you work really so now I'm just going to add more darkness in here I think you just have to try different things. I'm just going to shade his ears to make them kind of fade away a bit. I'm going to want some darkness under these kind of eyebrows. And there too. This will want to be dark around here as well. And probably coming in down there. Certainly these cheekbones need highlighting like that, so do that the other direction there. Um, well, make his lips, we'll shade them going straight up like that. And make the inside of his mouth completely black, but then we'll shade his tongue like that. And we probably want a little bit of sculpting on the nose there as well, like that. And I'm going to take this shade just up to the top there, and again on this side as well. Just getting smaller and smaller and smaller into dots up at the top. Uh, I think we need we need a little bit of something here, and probably under the nose as well. Yeah. And then he's kind of there'll be some shadiness coming from this collar, so I think we can kind of cross hatch a bit like that. And work that all the way up there like that. I think I can just make it this kind of aura around him darker still.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, go and learn how to draw a Dalek and uh, add to your Doctor Who drawing collection or just try the mystery drawing. Either way, make sure you're subscribed for new drawing videos every Monday and Friday uh, to the Shoe Drawing channel and go and visit my website, shoewainer.com to find out what I get up to. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. You take care now. Bye-bye.